T today, That's there was a hearing for the Senate Judiciary Committee on Antifa Violence. And I happened to tune in just around the beginning because I, you know, I worked throughout the day. So when I had the opportunity, I pulled up the live stream and I just couldn't do it. It was, um, who, who was it? Senator, what's his face? Oh, I don't remember. It was Maisie Hirono. And mm. then, um, oh, I'm forgetting. His other. first name's Jeff. I don't remember his last name. Merkley? Yeah. Is, is that his name? I'm probably getting his name wrong. But yeah, he's, he's Merkley, you were complaining about him when I walked in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, he one. just lied. Every, every, it's like, it's like I'm watching this thing and this guy gets up there and he looks at the camera and he opens his mouth and just like, Gar garbage. like garbage that's pouring out of his mouth just like human <laughs> human waste just like and he's pouring it all and i'm like what is this it was all lies it was all lies and he shows a picture of like the wall of moms like and it's looking all noble with like an upward oh. angle from the camera and he's like these, for these peaceful protesters being attacked by donald trump's secret unidentified police that's why i'm introducing this no secret police act oh my gosh and i'm like uh they're all identified all these guys have badge numbers. Yep. It's the stupidest thing ever. And those moms were kicking in the door house, like for the courthouse. Yeah. They're just the door things. house. Door house. <laughs> the enough. door to the courthouse. You get it. <laughs> Close enough. So here's what I see. Take a look at this from Barrett Wilson. Antifa apologist Senator Maisie Hirono just walked out of the Senate after refusing to denounce Antifa. Oh, yeah. Ted, I saw this. This I, I saw clips of it. And Ted Cruz was like, well, it's funny that not one of the Democrats have said anything negative about Antifa at all. Yep. Hey, would you like to say anything? Who, who is it? What was their name? Maisie Hirono. Maisie Hirona. Would you like to say anything right now before you leave? And she says something off the mic you can't hear. And he goes something like, no, I'm not going like, to let it be known. She has refused to say anything negative about Antifa and is leaving. What she did was this game they play where she's like, of course, we denounce extremism. That's what she said. She was like, we're, we're not OK with any violence to, to say that we won't condemn violent extremism is wrong. And then Ted Cruz is like, OK, will you say something? You know, will you condemn or call out Antifa? Down. She won't. won't do it. She won't because. These people have gone insane thinking they will win the election by supporting fringe far left extremists who are burning things down. Yep. So I'll tell you what's crazy, man. So this George, the, the George Floyd tape gets released. Yeah. The, the body cam footage. And one of the top posts on Reddit that I ended up seeing was was the footage. The number one comment was someone saying this is all wrong. Like. Every, every, this isn't the narrative that we've been exactly. told for three months. And they're like, all of a sudden, I'm not angry about what happened anymore. The dude was clearly resisting. Yep. He kicked his way out. He was fighting with cops. And the guy was like, I was getting so frustrated trying to like screaming at my phone. Dude, just shut up and do what they're telling you to do. Yeah, exactly. Now, I don't like that idea where it's like you have to just submit to these people who have the authority. However, there's a thing called strategy. And I think when it comes to the issue of George Floyd... And I don't want to get too much into this right now because I want to talk about Antifa. But there's a class issue from people who don't know how you navigate these scenarios. So swallow your pride, follow the orders, and then later, if you were wronged, you come back with legal cases. That's how the system works. Yeah. I mean, we talked about it, too. When, when it first started happening, we were talking about how, oh, man, like they put him in the car and then we were told that they took him out of the car. But he didn't. He kicked his way out. He jumped out of the car himself he and pushes fell out. to the ground and on asked, his face. No, no. He said, hold me on the ground. Yep. Hold several times. I don't want to get too much into that. I bring that up for one reason. I have started hearing from people and I've started seeing the Reddit comments. It's really interesting yeah. where they're saying things like I was already, you know, I, I was completely ready to vote against Trump. And then Antifa started rioting and the far left started rioting yep. and all of the Democrats abandoned me. Yep. Yep. Wow. How insane is it? And that's where I'm at. You know, Sargon makes this video where it's like Tim's on the Trump train with the MAGA beanie and all that stuff. And I'm like, okay, okay, sorry. It's a bit over the top. He's, confu <laughs> he's confusing us. Right, because you're the MAGA beanie guy. I think. Yes, what? I will. Oh, yeah, Once, what are, what are 30K, we we're at, we're currently we're at 18,000 oh, likes. Oh, snap. If we get Which to 30, is great. Y'all been smashing that like button. I like it. At 30, I'm happy. All right. At 30,000 <laughs> likes, he puts the MAGA beanie on, just yeah. so you know. So Not smash Tim. the like button. Yeah. I, believe, I believe you said the other day, 30,000 in super chats and you'll put the mug $30,000. <laughs> I was joking because I'm not going to do it. No. Uh, $30,000. Can though. you that's imagine? Like, wow. It's like a million I know, that's, viewers. That's crazy. Yeah. Man, we could buy a Tesla maybe. One Used day, one. One day, Tim. Okay, here's the point. Here's the point. <laughs> here's where I'm at. I watched them paint Black Lives Matter murals all over the streets. Yeah. And I said, okay, well, now I want to see all the other messages. Yep. And de Blasio said, go F yourself. To all the people who asked for it. Well, now he's getting sued. Did you see this? Yeah, yeah. But he already admitted 
he violated the law when he went and did it. Yep. He used executive authority to paint the street in front of Trump's building, violating the rights of everybody who like everybody in the area who doesn't want that area to become a spectacle. I mean, imagine if you run a business nearby. There is there there is near the Trump the Trump Tower a, a what is it called? Waffles and Dingus. You know what that is? The little like the little waffle cart. Food cart? Yeah, a little food yeah, cart. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Now, how would great. you feel if you had protest after protest after protest and you're like, I just wanted to run my business. This is where I'm permitted to have my food cart. And then they painted this without talking to anybody, without getting any permits from anybody. And now there's protests, there's people splashing paint, there's cops everywhere, they're fighting, and I can't sell I can't sell a waffle to save my life. I can't sell a dingus. <laughs> I can't sell any dingus. Dingus means <laughs> toppings for those that don't know. It's like a and New York. It's a, but it's more fun to say without any <laughs> right. context. So <laughs> the point is, this is why we have permitting processes to make sure, you know, we know what's going on. But Bill de Blasio doesn't care. I see that and I'm like, this is insane. But you know what? Fine. Paint your cell message. I'll leave your city. Then they started releasing people who had committed crimes. First, they started releasing people from jails and prisons because of COVID. And I'm like, well, it's an interesting ethical conundrum. OK, I guess. And I'm so I'm still not like, I'm. well, we'll see how this plays out. No, then they, I don't agree with that. I, I think that is absolutely an ethic conundrum because they release people from prisons, but then put sick people in nursing there homes. OK, we, we, well, that I mean, the point I'm saying is but that time. I, that's what I think about no, what was no, going no, 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 on at no. that time. And that pisses me off when they go released ahead, ahead, the prisoners. They, there was no discussion about putting people like people had not died. First, they said there's a concern that people in prisons will get covid. So we need to release them. And yeah. I said, I think there is an ethical conundrum. And do you have the right to detain someone in this situation that could get them sick with this, this illness? In which case I said, OK, I guess. Then they started arresting business owners and putting them in the jails, which clearly made no yeah. sense. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, now hold on a minute. Then Cuomo, Phil Murphy, and other governors started putting sick people in nursing homes, and apparently they're still doing it in some places. In Michigan Mich also. And people are dying. Yeah. And I'm like, now hold on there a minute. So they're literally Democratic releasing rioters in Dallas-Fort Worth. This is Texas, man. They said, we're dropping the rioting charges. Let them go. And I'm like, whoa, 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 hold on. Then the Supreme Court said no churches, minimal, minimal uh, uh, people allowed. They went car to car. There was a drive through procession for churches. They have, they, they have taken the Constitution with a smile on their face, looked us in the eye and taken a big old dump right on it while we can do nothing but watch. That's, so I'm like, you know what? Like. I'm not going to support them. That's what's changed about what's going on right now. So when I see Maisie Hirona, when I see Merkley or whatever his name is, and they're lying and they open their mouths and just human diarrhea, like just diarrhea sprays out all over the cameras. I'm like, get these people out of there. I have had enough of this. Here, here. You, right now, you've got Republicans who, in my opinion, many of them are just total garbage. But at least they're they're bending the knee to the populist wing of the Republicans for now. Not all of them. I do not like Lindsey Graham. I do not like Mitch McConnell. There are some there are some younger Republicans who are coming in. Trump is certainly not a Republican. He's a weird insurgent populist candidate who's come in and he's made, made a bunch of changes. That's why they don't like him at all. Absolutely. And there's been a bunch of Republican retirements. So I look at the Republicans and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't like these guys, but they're not doing a whole lot. The Democrats are whiny babies having a temper tantrum. And when they couldn't get their way, instead of having a reasonable debate and asking for the support of the American people, they sicked their attack dogs Antifa and then defended them in court or I'm sorry, in Congress that will literally in court when the AG from from uh, Oregon sues on their behalf. And then the state's like, you have no right to sue on their behalf. I kid you not. The AG sued on behalf of these far left extremists. Amazing. And then the judge said, you have no standing to sue on their behalf. And they're like, well, you know, just fine, whatever. And stormed out. I'm like, these people have lost their minds. Clearly. Ted Wheeler went out and joined them. And they were screaming and booing at him, telling him to resign. He still, he joins them. So I, I've had enough of this, dude. Yeah, it's, Wheeler the, scares me, man. These, these people are absolutely just going to burn everything to the ground. That's what they're doing. So I'll tell you what. That's why I think, you know what? Maybe this Durham thing really has something to it. It does. For sure. I mean, they're, they, all these people that are in charge, they're probably listed in this report. They're probably the ones that are going to burn themselves. So who cares about the country? Sure. Yeah. Figuratively burn, <laughs> you know, but who cares about the country if they're going to get arrested and go to jail for the rest of their lives? Exactly. Why, why would they care? They've got money. They're using every single thing at their expense to make it happen. So so here's what Andy No said. All right. Maisie Hirono stated numerous times at, uh, at a hearing on Antifa today. That they've killed no one. In 2019, Antifa militant Charles Landeros launched an attack on a school resource officers and got himself killed. Willem Van Spronsen, Van Spronsen firebombed ICE, getting himself killed. In both circumstances, they tried to kill people. Yep. 
This first guy, try, he pulled out a gun. They threw him down and they put a bullet in his head. So I'm sorry, man. It, it's to me, it's frankly absurd that you're going to be like, Antifa never killed anybody. Yeah, but not for a lack of trying. Just because they're really bad they're at what bad they do it. doesn't mean they're not dangerous psychopaths. But he mentions Connor Betts, who posted tons of pro-Antifa stuff all over social media accounts and then went on a mass shooting spree killing several people. He killed nine people. They mentioned a bunch of other uh, points in this post, but I'm just going to show you this. The FBI has opened 300 domestic terror investigations as a result of the riots. Attorney tells Capitol uh, hearing on Antifa. The U.S. attorney revealed stats at Antifa hearing chaired by Senator Ted Cruz. But Antifa is not a real thing. You know, it's funny. There's a there's a specific Antifa cell that says, here's the date we were founded. And if you want to become a member, it's closed. Send us an email and we'll consider you. Hmm. But I thought Antifa didn't have members. Isn't that what they said? It's not a real thing. They lied. Yep. So it's like it's it's a, they're franchises basically. They have leadership. Yeah, that's they have, a good way of putting it. It, it is. Yeah, Perfect. It's a franchise. Yeah. yeah. So there are leaders. There are members. You can join, and they cooperate with each other like a franchise does. And then the, and then the Democrats are the ones that are defending it. How insane is it that we can literally have these extremists? Do you see what happened today? Uh, happened the other day in Seattle. What? Some some of these far left, you know, Black Lives Matter people tried going to the Seattle police chief's house. Oh, and yeah. then the SUV blocks the road. They get out with guns. Mm -hmm. and, and they're like, we're just peacefully assembling. And they go, peaceably assemble somewhere else. No, and they said, you know, you're peaceably assembling because I got a gun. <laughs> the, the, first th the first thing they said was go peaceably assemble somewhere else. And then they were like, dude, we're peaceful protesters. And you pointed a gun at us. And she goes, that's why you're peaceful. <laughs> and I was like, "Ooh, man. <laughs> Love it. Spicy. I'll tell you what. Freedom of speech doesn't mean freedom from consequence. And what these leftists like to say all the time is the First Amendment protects you from government intrusion. <laughs> it, it, when somebody cancels you, it's them showing you the door and saying, there's the way out. So let me make it clear for everybody. The government didn't show up and kick these people out and say you can't protest. It was just people because freedom of speech means freedom doesn't doesn't mean freedom from consequence. Right? right. So if you want to engage in violent riots around the country for almost three months and then when you try showing up to a residential neighborhood, they, they come out, jump out with rifles. You can't go. It's not fair. Help. I'm being oppressed. No, I'm sorry. They didn't work for the government. These are just regular people telling you they are tired of your BS and showing you the door. Called that months ago. Yep. Well, I look forward to people protecting their communities, you know, not not taking this lying down. Now, the the important thing in all of this, first and foremost, is peace in the literal version, nonviolence, like the last thing anybody I'll tell you what, man, to all the people. And I've seen people laugh about like, I'd love to I'd love to see what happens if they came to my place. Oh, I'll show them what for. It's like, bro, you don't want violence, man. You no. know, you don't get it. These, uh, there's a lot of people who are tough guys on the left and, and on the right. Um, you know, I, I say I say that in that way because the right isn't the one going out constantly looking for fights. It's Antifa. They think they're tough guys. Yes, they do. So, but in reality, there are, you know, you know, tough guys on the right, too. You know what happens as almost every time, unless you're, you're a, 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 a psycho, psychopathic murderer. I've seen these people, man, you think you're all tough until you actually hurt somebody. And then they're like panicking. And their, their heart palpitations and their sweat and bullets and they're begging like, man, I wish this didn't happen. There, I've seen a lot of, you know, there have been experiences growing up on the south side of Chicago where people want to talk big until they realize what it really means to hurt somebody and how that affects you, how that affects your life. And, and you do not want this, man. You do not want violence. What we want is the tradition of, you know, you know we almost even have like a revolution every two to two and four years. When we swap out politicians and have new, you know, government officials come in with new negotiations, it's it's actually pretty incredible that we can maintain this. That's really what we want. We've got a problem right now with these far left intersectionalist. It's an overt white supremacist ideology. They just have guilty consciences. And I, I kid you not, Sargon brought this up. The Robin D'Angelo woman straight up says she is a racist. They all do. Yep. Like these progressives will tell you they're racists. Like wow, they they're admitting and, it. And Marxists. Yeah, they're they're overtly racist. They say they are. They literally will tell you that. And it's like, then why would you take their advice when they say repeal civil rights law? Right, exactly. That's the craziest thing to me. So this, whatever this fringe ideology is that wants to rewind the clock, this reactionary ideology that wants to bring us back in time to the 1950s, these people are insane, literally. So we need to stop it. And we stop it in the best way possible by standing up, speaking out, you know, resistance, quitting your job if you have to. Like that woman from MSNBC 
to be, you know, and to be uh, just to make sure it's clear, she's talking about all media, all of it, all yep. these big media networks, including Fox News. She, she, she posted a follow up saying, you know, Fox News published this clickbait thing about her working for MSNBC. And she's like, it's all the same. They couldn't they couldn't help themselves. So this is what you do. You, you be brave. Like, uh, I'll, tell, I'll tell you what you can do. I, I, and I mean this. A lot of people have asked me, what can we do? Let me stress one important point, and then, I'll, and then I'll tell you what you can do. A lot of people want to know how to fight back, and a lot of people start talking about riots and protests that does not, uh, riots, riots don't work, nope. violence don't. And, we, and we're learning this now because Trump is doing better in the polls following all the rioting. People are freaking out and getting angry, and they're asking for help. That's entirely predictable. Opposition to Black Lives Matter is skyrocketing, clearly showing that the stupidest thing you can do is engage in violence. It, it really is. And I'll tell you what else you can do. You can go to Project Veritas and you can send an email to James O'Keefe and you can expose these companies that are doing wrong. You can you can talk to him and you can you can blow the whistle. You can do, th- you know, within within whatever legal channels, you know, keeping everything clean, peaceful and legal. You can expose this. And that's how our system works, because this country is full of people who love love this country. They're rational, reasonable, and they want to live in peace. Here, here. So if you come out, let's say you work for one of these big companies and you know they're doing wrong. Like this woman who worked for MSNBC, man, she's she's like tripled her followers. She's got everybody hitting her up. Everyone's writing about her. She'll probably there's, there's probably going to be like some new startup that's going to let her write the journalism she's wanted to write now because she she, she spoke up about it. That's I hope what, so. That's what we need. Yep. So imagine you work for any one of these companies and you get some document and you know that they're about to do something that is a violation of ethics. You can go talk to Project Veritas and you know that they'll publish your story and they'll and they'll give you the platform to speak and expose this. And they've also run run GoFundMe's for their whistleblowers. Yep. And they've even hired some of them. So I can't guarantee anything, man, but you got to be brave. And that's what they say. I love how they try to attack Project Veritas over and over again. They did this hearing on, um, you know, big tech and censorship. And the journalists all say, without evidence, there's no evidence. Right wing conspiracy theories. You literally have whistleblowers publishing documents and video from inside these companies. Yep. And, and with Project Veritas being like, yeah, actually, I worked there. I said this happened. Here's a video of it happening. And here are the emails where they ask for it to happen. Yeah. And the journalist goes, hmm, like I said, no evidence. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you know what? Yep. These people are going to lie. But that's you, what you can do is you can go out because people are listening to what Veritas is saying. You know, uh, pe- you, we talk about this stuff. Be brave and call it out and slam the insanity. Otherwise, you're going to end up like at some point what's going on in Louisville with these Black Lives Matter groups going to the businesses and saying, you know, give us money or else. Yeah. And then smashing a potted plant. I know that's so mafioso. So something that I, I dawned on me the other day that I that I stressed out to the to the world, even if, if you don't want to get into politics, that's OK, you know, because it takes a lot to fully understand the whole political realm. But it is imperative that you know who your representatives are. So look at your mayor, look at your state representatives, look at who your congressmen are, look at who they are so you know who represents you where you're living. If you don't know who they are, that's an issue, and you, you should go find that out. You should find out who's representing you and who's re- who's trying to run, and then maybe pitch in a few bucks to that, that person that you think should be and talk to, talk to your friends, talk to other people like, a political conversation needs to be brought back into the the norm. We we should be talking about who's our leaders, who's actually leading us. So, you know, if you don't if you don't want to get super political, I get it. But at some point, you got to be an adult, and part of being an adult in this country is understanding who represents you and who's making laws for you. Here here we have Adam giving this impassioned speech about knowing who represents you and standing up for what you believe in, being responsible and mature. And the chat's all like, we only need 4,000 more likes for the Maga Beanie. <laughs> oh, so they're still going at it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> they're, motiv- they're pumping themselves up down Oh, there. that's cool. The Maga no, Beanie. I, I see a lot of people agreeing with me right now. Yeah, absolutely. Because, definitely. Because that's what needs to happen. So one of the things I was going to pitch in was that my mom used to help run the caucuses in the state that we lived in, which I thought was like weird and uninteresting at the time. But now as I've gotten older, I'm like, wow, she was like really involved in the local politics. And she knew a lot of our local leaders and we would have meals with them and stuff. And it was really interesting. So it's like, maybe you can get involved that way and help host some of the the meetings that happen in your state. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. We do the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. If you want to catch the full show, tune into this channel, subscribe, hit the like button, or check us out on iTunes and Spotify. And we will soon have this podcast up for free on all podcast platforms. Thanks for hanging out. 
and we'll see you all in the next episode.